This is Boomer Life on CL 650. We're back with Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm George Gordon. Today we're talking about the dramatic effects of hearing loss and the solutions that you will find with Next Gen Hearing. Joining us in studio, Next Gen's Dr. Ted Venema. Dr. Ted, Describe the fitting process that a client will go through at Next Gen Clinic because they're not all the same, and this is uh, this is something you've worked on very hard. Yeah, the fitting process is really quite straightforward. When you walk in because you're thinking you're having a hearing problem, the first thing the audiologist or hearing instrument specialist is going to be asking you is about yourself and where are your problems manifested? What kind of diff hearing difficulties do you have? Where do you experience these problems? And once they've got an idea of you, your own particular complaints, then they do what's called a case history. And a case history is a, is a detailed medical medically oriented, they want to find out whether you need to be referred to a physician or not, because sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, okay? It's a, and they want to find out whether, whether you've had noise exposure. They want to find out if you've had a lot of ear infections as a child, um, whether you've had dizziness, because hearing and balance are kind of connected. All kinds of, do you have ringing in your ears? Do you have tinnitus? All these questions. And then they will actually look in your ears and determine whether you need to get wax cleared out or not, mm -hmm. okay, and whether your eardrums look normal. And when you're looking in someone's ear, you're only looking an inch, like, you know, down the ear canal, because the ear canal is about an inch long. Okay, we're Canadians, metric, two and a half centimeters. So, <laughs> at any rate. 2.54. So, so, yeah, quite, yeah. <laughs> and yet the UK is the only bloody country not using it, isn't it? <laughs> at any rate, and when you're looking at the outer ear and ear canal, that's only the outer part, because behind the drum, You've got the three smallest bones in your body, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And then behind that, you've got this snail-shaped organ called a cochlea. And cochlea is Greek for snail shell because it looks like a snail shell. And it's about as big as a snail shell. It's about a center, about the width of your fingernail, you know, it's about a centimeter across. And that, that little coil has 15,000 hair cells. In it, tiny little filaments, and those filaments represent treble, mids, and bass pitches, kind of like keys on a piano. That's the area that's usually damaged when you've got hearing loss. When you've got problems like an ear infection, that's usually you've got pus and an infection behind your eardrum, not in that inner ear, it's mostly the middle ear, and that's medically treatable. But when you've got hair cell damage in your inner ear, Y'all can't fix that, mm. okay? It, what's, it's done gone. And all you can do is wear hearing amplification. And it's the most common cause of hearing loss in the world. 95% of hearing loss is caused by damage to those tiny little filaments. And that's mostly environmental yep. noise. Noise causes it. Noise is the second most common cause of hearing loss. Age is the first most common cause of hearing loss. Did you know in Africa, elderly people have better hearing than they do in Canada? It's because Africa has less noise pollution. We have more noise pollution. We weren't meant to hear the sounds that we hear. Like, we're not supposed to hear the clanging of steel on steel. That's just was our ears were meant to hear the soft voices over the crackling of a fire. Right. No, we were not, and, and distant thunder. You know, hopefully not of a lion close yeah. up, <laughs> but, you know, so noise, second most common cause. Age, the most common cause in any language, in any country. Right. So it's, and it's not just the fact that you are getting older, although that's the, uh, the biggest part of it, but where you're growing older. Mm -hmm. If you grow up in a noisy environment... Uh, it's going to compound it. Yeah. it it's can the same said then be said for somebody who lives in a city. They're more likely... Their hearing is going to age more quickly. Yeah, if, you're, if you don't protect it. And that's why the sickening thing about noise-induced hearing loss is it's the most preventable. You can prevent it. Yeah. It's like If you can hear some kid's iPod playing or iPad or whatever, and you're not listening to it, Houston... You got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like you can imagine the decibel level smashing yeah. into that kid's drums, yeah. eardrums. I mean, we all know we don't stare at the sun. 
So people somehow think hearing is impervious to the ravages of noise. It's, we're nuts. We're, that way, noise is a pollution. So kids are not just mumbling. They're mumbling loudly. Because... <laughs> and they're going to be getting presbycusis earlier than they should. <laughs> well, that's going to be, you know, we, we talk about the, the boomer generation yeah. Yeah. that's now uh, into this and, and trying to improve its hearing and, uh, you know, still be in contact yeah. with the rest of the world uh, for, for the next gen. Yeah hearing you know for the next gen generation mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, what do we call them now the uh, millennials uh, the millennials yep. it's going to be even even more important yeah it's it's and we're learning we are learning i mean there's noise protection laws all over the place and so we are get beginning to get it but you know there's a funny anecdotal story here that there's a guy in wales he didn't like kids hanging around his drugstore so he emitted a high pitched tone from a speaker it's called the mosquito google it up mosquito noise and it only the kids could hear it of course <laughs> so the kids would be gritting their teeth like ah oh, there's some let's get out of here there's some the elderly people the adults 45 they couldn't Nothing. hear it no problem <laughs> it's diabolical brilliant is what it is. brilliant <laughs> okay let's get back to the hearing aid and and, uh, and and how it all gets connected. Sure. I love getting off topic, but <laughs> you know, we, we better we better cover the stuff. It is so important. So let's talk about how it all is connected. Sure. So hearing aids, as we said earlier uh, in the first segment, people's hearing levels get worse. I mean, mm -hmm. they need more decibels to just barely hear, and yet their ceiling of loudness tolerance hasn't changed. So the, your floor to ceiling in quotes is is smaller. So it takes you more decibels to just barely hear something, but yet you can't stand 100 decibels. And that's going to be the same for someone who's got normal hearing or if you have hearing loss. 100 decibels is going to sound loud, okay? So hearing aids have to amplify soft sounds by a lot. And then as the sound gets louder, hearing aids have to automatically back off. That's why hearing aids aren't just amplifiers. Think of an amplifier that is amplifying more for soft sounds and less for loud sounds, and it's constantly changing the amount by which it's amplifying, depending on how loud the sound is coming in. So if I'm speaking really softly, the hearing aid's working harder, and if I start to, tar start to talk louder, the hearing aid automatically backs off. Why? Because 100 decibels sounds just as loud to someone who has hearing loss as it does to someone who has completely normal hearing. Well, it makes a lot of sense if you think about uh, today's car radios or music centers, mm -hmm. um, and you can adjust the bass and the treble yep. to your own preference sure. yeah. uh, to maybe where you want to hear the specific, the horns or the strings yep. or something in, mm -hmm. in the music. So it, it, I guess it only makes sense yeah. that would work with your ear. Yeah. And you're doing, you're, that the interesting thing is that the distance, the decibel distance from your floor, okay, where your feet are standing to your ceiling is, let's say, 100 decibels big in someone who's got normal hearing because mm -hmm. a person with normal hearing can hear all the way down to zero, and 100 is too loud. A person with hearing loss can't hear anything till 50, let's say. The person has a moderate hearing loss, and yet 100 is too loud. So that person's range is smaller. So hearing aids have to accommodate that. They have to amplify soft sounds by a lot, average sounds by a bit less, Loud sounds by little or nothing at all. That's a technology called compression. And compression doesn't come for free. I mean, it's, it's, mm. that's why hearing aids cost more than glasses do. They have a different job to do. They're not just refocusing light on an intact retina. They're trying to amplify into a damaged inner ear and they've got to constantly change the amount by which they're amplifying on a, on a constant continual basis so that requires technology that wasn't available 20 years ago 20 years ago people were constantly adjusting the volume of their hearing aids if some kid was talking soft oh crank it up all of a sudden loud oh crank it down they were constantly fussing and fidgeting don't need to do that anymore it's just your hearing aids automatically accommodating Wow. Yeah, that's the difference. Let's, so, let's talk about the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> so here you go. The fun part is this. Input to a hearing aid's microphone, 
okay, the sound of speech coming into the hearing aid's microphone, because the hearing aids have a microphone, and then they have an amplifier, and then they have a speaker, right? So, input sound to a hearing aid plus the amount by which it amplifies equals the sum total, right? Like one okay. plus two is three. Now, they have to make sure that three <laughs> isn't too loud. Right. So, input sound to a hearing aid plus your muscle, the gain, the amplification, one plus two equals the sum total decibels that's hitting your drum. And that has to be taken into consideration when fitting hearing aids. And that's why hearing aids have what they call fitting methods. All people trained to fit hearing aids use fitting methods that they've learned in school. Audiologists learn it in graduate school, hearing instrument specialists learn it in college, but by gum, they all have to learn these things called fitting methods. And it's all because hearing aids have sound coming in, and then they have to amplify by some amount, and they have to make sure that the sum total isn't too loud. And there's a trick to doing that. And, uh... And if it's not done correctly, uh, I've heard a couple of people, oh, I'm never going back. They come exactly. in and hurt my ear, and yep. I'm, that's it. You know, yep. I'll just sit here it's and called, pretend I can hear you. You bet. In the, and the trick is called, it's called the half gain rule. If you have a 50 decibel hearing loss, if it takes you 50 decibels to just barely hear a sound, mm -hmm. I'm going to amplify regular speech by half your hearing loss, half the degree. I'm going, to get, I'm going to amplify speech by 25 because okay. 25 is half of 50. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because input of speech of, let's say, 50 plus 25 is 75, right? Okay. That's going to be okay to you. If I amplified by the full degree of your loss, if your hearing loss is 50, and if I take speech, and, which is 50 coming in, and I amplify it by 50, what's my sum total? 100%. That's going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to be 100 decibels. You're going to be going, I can't wear this thing. It's too loud. You go from what, 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 what. You, yeah. you don't have to yell. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why they called it the half gain rule. Amplify average speech by about half the degree of the loss because one plus two is three. Input sound plus the amount of amplification equals the sum total hitting your eardrum. We're going to talk a bit more about um, fitting methods coming up. We'll talk about we'll talk about some anecdotal stuff too. You know, experiences that yep. you've had, uh, Doctor Ted, with maybe older people, young people mm -hmm. who have uh, suddenly got better hearing oh, yeah. or been in the dark of sound, yep. as as you would want yep. to uh, talk about it. it. It is so fascinating, so rewarding mm -hmm. now to understand the technology has caught up and that anybody. Yeah. Anybody oh, can be helped to some degree. Anybody can. When some, one is silly not to try it these days. You're listening to Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm George Gordon. We're talking about the dramatic effects of hearing loss and solutions you will find with Next Gen Hearing. Uh, we'll be back with Dr. Ted Venema in just a moment. Get more information, by the way, at nextgenhearing.com. Celebrating the Boomer Lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.